Hi everyone, I'm Ina and this is what's in the bag for the week of November 15th. We're at a really special location today. It's definitely been a while, but we're here at the Tribeca Farm with one of our team members, Kate. Thanks so much for having us. Of course, it's so great having you here today. We're actually having a really special event. We're having tea and cookies with Kate. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. These cookies look incredible, Ina. Did oh, you make them yourself? I did. I actually pressed them with the flowers that you gave me. They're beautiful. Um, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Grown here at Tribeca. Um, the tea that we're having is actually this week's surprise. Um, this is Masha tea. They are actually made in small batches here in Brooklyn. Oh, great. Um, they use only natural ingredients and this is made with design beauty and health in mind um, so this particular batch is called early tea so it'll be a nice little boost for the morning that's so good i'm really looking forward to trying some i really love loose leaf teas like this where you can actually pack it into your own infuser here i have mr t um, and then I have the strawberry. <laughs> it's just a, such an easy way to make tea a little bit more sustainable. You know, the single use disposable tea bags, it adds up, you know, after so many cups of tea. So this is just a really easy way to make tea a little bit more sustainable. And then we'll just get some hot water in there. Have you been drinking a lot of tea recently? Oh, absolutely. Especially with the cooling up, cooling weather. Oh yeah. I love to cozy up with a cup of tea during this season. Okay. So while we let that infuse, um, I'd love to hear just a little bit about what you're doing here at Tribeca. What's been happening. I know that a lot of our members have questions, you know, do we still have the farm? Obviously we do. Um, but we'd love to hear what's going on here at Tribeca. Yeah. Well, here we are um, in Tribeca and we are turning this farm into a flower production farm. So you'll see a lot of the flowers that you receive in your greens pack all come from Tribeca. Awesome. Can you tell me a little bit how you got into hydroponic farming? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, so my background is in horticulture and I really got interested in the controlled environment agriculture aspect of hydroponics. And that's why I'm here today. Oh, well, we're so lucky to have you. And all of your hard work shows in these beautiful blue boxes. It's so great to see all of the beautiful edible flowers. We're actually having some pressed edible flowers in shortbread cookies. Um, some of the different varieties we have here, there's viola flowers, the, which, which ones are these ones? These are begonia flowers. Look at how great those came out in the cookies. They look and they taste really good too. Um, and then we also have some mint varieties that we see in the herbs mm -hmm. and the oxalis leaves in the pressed cookies as well. I love that you separated the petals from the leaf itself. So naturally you would see it like this, but splitting up the leaves is really just a beautiful way of, you know, just adding more oxalis into every dish. That was actually more of a practical thing. <laughs> um, when you're pressing the flowers into the cookie, it has to be flat. And so one thing that I do is I actually press it in, in between like a, a, two heavy books oh, wow. um, so that it's easier to work with and press into and roll into the cookies. So that's what I had to do for the oxalis leaves. I know you have so many talents. <laughs> These are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I think this is the perfect time to have a cookie. I, I mean, think so too. We can't look at them. I think so too. Um, is your tea steeped? Yes, my tea is steeped. Which one do you, do you want? So we have the viola flowers and the mint. We have the begonias. We have the oxalis. Which one, which one are you going for? Oh, man, I, I'm a fan of this begonia flower. It's yeah. been a week of begonias for me, so I'm definitely going to go for this one. I'm going to have the viola flower with the little mint leaf. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> These are really good sugar cookies. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> wow. If you're trying to impress anybody, the edible flowers are the way to go. Yeah. If you notice that they're going bad, 
or you know starting to age out this is a great way to not waste those flowers just press them into some cookies all right i think our tea is done steeping i'm just gonna put mr t over here i'll i'll, I'll put my little strawberry <laughs> here too the great thing with these things is that if you're done with your tea you can just add more water and steep it again. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, masha tea is really good. It's so fragrant too. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Has a little bit of like a citrusy kick to it as well. It's very nice. In this mix, there's a little bit of lemon balm. Mm. So I think that's the flavor that you're tasting. So good. This is probably the best tea I've had in a while. Kate, can you tell us a little bit about some of the crops that are growing here at the farm that the members might see in their blue box this week? Oh yeah. So this week, um, we are featuring Dianthus, which you'll see growing right behind me. Um, this is a beautiful flower. It's probably the brightest flower that we're growing on the farm at the moment. And it really does pop a color in your dish. Um, they don't have too much of a flavor profile to them, but you can separate the petals individually. And if you're doing something with like cookies or a, a, like a little cupcake uh, dessert, you can always add these little petals just to add a little bit of color to your dish. Oh, that color is amazing. Yeah. They're known, um, another common name of Dianthus is like our carnations mm -hmm. and um, they come in all different, all different colors and whatnot. Um, we used to grow bicolor Dianthus here on the farm. And currently I'm growing some Japanese um, Dianthus here. Ooh, I can't wait to see when that comes up in the blue box. Oh, yeah, it's a lot bigger than your, uh, your typical Dianthus that you see, but the colors are just gorgeous. Tell me a little bit about that fiery orange flower. Oh man. It's just, it really captures the colors of autumn. It's probably one of my favorite things that we're growing on the farm right now, marigold flowers. They're so useful. And every person that gets one of these, you can really do a lot with marigold flowers. Um, like I said, you can separate the petals um, similar to the dianthus um, flower. Um, and these petals have a lot more of a fragrant um, taste to them. Um, it's very citrusy. It has like a little bit of a peppery profile to them, um, but they are so fragrant and so aromatic and they can really brighten up your dish. They're, um, they're really fun. Another really cool thing about marigold flowers is that if you let them actually die back, the petals and this little bud itself um, turns into sort of like a storage for seeds. And um, once this flower dies back and all the petals fall off, you'll have a little container of um, seeds in this little bud so you can replant any of these marigold seeds. Definitely going to keep that in mind for next spring when I'm planting the garden. Yeah. There's amazing aromas coming from this blue box. Just, I can smell it from over here. I think I smell some basils and maybe a mint flavor. Can you share some of the herbs? Oh that are yeah. In this box? So this week we have our infamous blue spice basil. Um, it is really the most aromatic basil that's out there. Um, has uh, notes of vanilla, um, cinnamon. It really, I tell everyone, it really reminds me of the holidays. Um, I sometimes steep this one leaf in my apartment just before I have guests come over and it really makes the place smell really warm and welcoming. That is genius. I'm having guests over for um, the holidays. Thanksgiving is coming up. Oh, yes. I'm definitely taking that yeah. idea. <laughs> Take as much blue spice basil as you have and just put it in a nice little pot. Let it simmer for a little like an hour or so. You can add some other great herbs in there. Um, you can add cloves as well. Cinnamon really makes your apartment smell like a wonderful spice box. And it's just so much better than, you know, 
burning a candle that you might not know what all of the ingredients are going into yeah. a candle. This is just such a more natural way to make your house smell so fragrant and pleasant. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. I love doing it. Definitely check out our meal plan on the Farm One Members Portal because there is a recipe for a basil flour tea. Um, so definitely give that a try. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the little flower clusters that you have in there as well? This is an exciting one. So this week we'll be having some Nepotella flowers. And these are little clusters of that really punch a lot of flavor in each one of these flower petals. Do you want to try one? Yeah. Okay, so just for scale, this is, oh, this is how small the flower is. So little. What do you taste? Wow. It's super minty. It's like a full breath mint, but mm -hmm. in a flower. I'm tasting a little bit of lemon and citrus and yeah, definitely strong notes of peppermint in there. Cool. You pretty much got it all down. Um, the, this is also sort of part of the um, oregano family. Oh. So the leaves from these flower clusters really taste like oregano. Um, Nepotella is native to Italy and it's grown in the fields in Tuscany typically. Um, but we love growing Nepotella for the flowers here in Tribeca. Oh, this, I could definitely have that in some tea. Maybe topping a cupcake mm -hmm. with the little flowers because those flowers pack so much of a punch. It's, I'm, I'm so surprised. Yeah. So would really love to have that. Smell great too. Oh, thank you so much for walking us through the herbs and edible flowers this week, Kate. Of course, it was my pleasure. It was you really have... great having you oh here too. Gosh, this is so lovely. You have to tell me what your favorite edible flower is. Oh man. So personally, I would say Oxalis. And it has a very distinct flavor profile to them. I often compare um, Oxalis um, leaves to the same taste as um, when you bite into a plum. So it reminds me of the skin of a plum and it has like a tart, sour flavor profile to them. And also the leaves are just so, so pretty to um, garnish your plate with. The sour, I like just you describing it gives me that feeling in mm. the back of my jaw that I had something sour because it is super tart. Yeah. The oxalis leaves have a really strong punch of tart. Of Did you know that you can also eat the stem? Oh, really? Yeah. Um, they're really tasty too. I often um, pickle these oh. with some like vinegar or some lemon. Yeah. Okay. It feels like I tasted a grape because the stem pops with so much flavor. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It, it was like a juicy grape. Yeah. No, it's wow. so cool. Be sure to follow us on Instagram where Kate will be taking us through the edible flower series. She'll walk us through all the different kinds of flowers growing here at Tribeca and ideas on how to use them. It's been great to learn all of the ideas that she has today and I'm really excited to learn more through the edible flower series. To learn more about what else is on this week's menu, like the red acre cabbage in the baby greens or the pak choy in the microgreens, Head to the menu at farm.one at your members portal. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you again next week.